Hello, and welcome back to Downtime Activities. Today, we're going to be doing a character build. And for this character build, we're going to be doing the Frost Scale Barbarian. This is a Dragonborn Barbarian that will combine some really cool Frost Sorcerer elements, as well as the tankiness of the Barbarian, for a really cool, flavorful character. So let's get into the build. The Frost Scale Barbarian character build is a Dragonborn character who combines Sorcerer and Barbarian to become an absolute terror on the battlefield. You'll be breathing ice on your enemies, shards of ice will cover you as armor, enemies hitting you will be taking damage, and you'll be swinging wildly with your great axe, crushing anyone in your path. At its core, this build seeks to combine two really cool, powerful abilities that work in tangent really well. These two abilities are Barbarian's damage resistances granted from Rage, as well as the Armor of Agathis spell which gives temporary hit points and does splashback damage to enemies when they hit you with melee attacks. For those of you who don't know how this interaction works, damage resistances are applied to temporary hit points. This means that the damage taken to your temporary hit points from Armor of Agathis will be cut in half for the relevant damage types that you get resistances to with Rage. This will keep those temporary hit points around longer keep you up longer and not taking damage, and most importantly mean that you will be doing splashback damage of pretty large amounts from that Armor of Agathis spell. While this is the core two abilities that we're going to be playing off of for this build, the basic build itself is still really cool and flavorful. This character will be a big, powerful barbarian in your classic idea of a barbarian, crushing things, being strong, attacking recklessly, but also have a huge spellcasting progression with big, powerful, ice-based spells that are really flavorful and make a lot of sense for a dragonborn of a frosty ancestry. To begin with, with this build, we're going to be choosing our race, which is, of course, the dragonborn. Specifically, we're going to be using the variant from Fizbin's Treasury of Dragons. This gives a more powerful and interesting dragonborn build, in my opinion. The major ability you get from the Dragonborn stats in Fizbins are your Breath Weapon. The Breath Weapon is a 15-foot cone that your opponents must make a deck save against that does 1d10 damage of the relevant type for the type of dragon you choose. They also will take half on a successful save, meaning that no matter what you'll be doing some damage. It's 1d10 at first level but scales to be 2d10 at 5th, 3d10 at 11th, and 4d10 at 17th and you can use it a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. The most important thing, in my opinion, about this breath weapon is that you can use it in place of one of your attacks during an attack action, which means later on, when we get multi-attack from Barbarian, we will be able to use this breath weapon and still make a melee attack on the same turn. You also get a damage resistance of the relevant type to the dragon you choose, and for this build, I suggest choosing the Silver Dragonborn. You could also choose a white dragonborn, and that would give different abilities that I find to be less overall powerful and interesting, but still work really well for this build. The silver ancestry gives you additional breath weapon options when you reach fifth level. These two breath weapon options are the innervating breath and the repulsion breath. The innervating breath incapacitates enemies, and the repulsion breath pushes them back 20 feet and knocks them prone. These similarly can be used in place of one of the attacks during an attack action, and you can use one of these options once per long rest. For our ability scores, we're going to choose the optional rule of giving plus one to three different stats of our choice, and our stat array will end up with a 15, 10, 15, 8, 10, and 13, respectively, putting those plus ones in Strength, Con, and Charisma, our major three attributes. So our final strength will be 16, our con will be 16, and our charisma will be 14. When building this character, choose whatever background makes sense for your backstory or whatever you're wanting to do to make your character be ingrained in the world. I didn't pick one here because it really doesn't matter. This is all about the flavor of your character. A brief side note here, for ability score improvements during this character build, I won't be going into any feats but there are some that are useful ones you could consider taking to replace the typical plus two to a stat or plus one to two different stats. The feats that I would consider taking are the Elemental Adept, choosing Cold, but an important distinction here is that it works only for your spells, not your breath weapons. 
You could also choose the Great Weapon Master for even more damage output when you're attacking recklessly with great weapons. You could also choose the Dragon Fear feat, which gives a new sort of breath weapon that is a fear effect that goes around you. Really strong, uh, another great option to pick. For level one with this build, we're gonna start out with our first level in Barbarian. This will give us strength and con save proficiency, light armor, medium armor, and shield proficiency, and simple and martial weapon proficiency. As far as skills go, choose whatever you want, whatever you like. I suggest ending up with athletics and intimidation between your background skills and these class skills, but really, world's your oyster here, whatever you like. I chose Barbarian for level one instead of Sorcerer to have a higher total HP, and because I think overall strength is arguably a better save than Charisma, you can make an argument either way, but there's a little bit more strength saves and charisma saves in the game, so that's what I went with. I suggest using a two-handed weapon for this character because we really want to maximize damage output, and we don't really care about our AC. We actually kind of want people to be hitting us with attacks for that Armor of Agathis splashback damage, so I wouldn't worry too much about trying to go sword and board with this character. I also suggest wearing medium armor, although once again we don't really care about our AC. You might as well have a decent AC, and we're not going to be ever really increasing our dexterity, so light armor and the unarmored options aren't going to be that great. Later on, our con could get high enough that it could be a better option to just be naked instead of putting armor on, but at least to start, whatever medium armor you can afford is usually going to be the best option. At level 1 we'll also get the Barbarian's keystone ability Rage, and their unarmored defense ability. Rage will give us some bonuses on strength-based checks, extra damage, and most importantly, resistance on some of the damage we'll be taking. For level two, we're gonna be taking our first level in Sorcerer. And this one's a little different than your average Sorcerer. I know being a Dragonborn and having Dragon Blood, doing a Dragon Sorcerer seems like it would make the most sense. But for this build, we're going to be throwing a curveball here, and we're going to be using an Unearthed Arcana Giant Soul Sorcerer. The Giant Soul Sorcerer is a really interesting and cool Sorcerer option, and specifically for us, we're going to be choosing Frost, because this is how we're going to get access to the Armor of Agathis spell for free as a Sorcerer. The level 1 Sorcerer abilities that we'll be receiving are of course the spell casting of a Sorcerer, as well as the Jotun Resilience from the Giant Soul Sorcerer, giving us an additional 1 HP per level in Sorcerer, and we'll be getting the Ray of Frost Cantrip and the first level spell Armor of Agathis for free. I'll break down here which spells I would choose for this character, but again, there's lots of leeway here. Choose what you like. I tried to go with a lot of frost and ice and water based stuff because it made the most sense, but pick whatever you like. The four cantrips I went with were Frostbite, Shape Water, Gust, and Chill Touch. Chill Touch isn't technically actually ice damage, but it's another damage type just in case you're fighting a white dragon or something. And you'll also get of course, Ray of Frost from that previously mentioned ability from the Giant Soul Sorcerer. You start with two first level spell slots, and the two spells known that I chose were Ice Knife and Fog Cloud, just going after that kind of icy sort of feel again. While you have Ice Knife and Fog Cloud, for the next good while, you're very rarely going to be using your spell slots to cast anything other than Armor of Agathis. For level three, we're gonna be taking our second level in Sorcerer, which will give us the Font of Magic ability, meaning that we'll start to have sorcery points. At second level, we'll have two sorcery points, and each time we level up from here on out, we'll gain an additional one, so that by the time we are a 15th level sorcerer, we'll have 15 sorcery points. Right now, we can't use those sorcery points for anything, and it's gonna be a little while before we come back to sorcerer and get those metamagic options, so it's just gonna be our way to regain a first level spell slot throughout the day. This will also get us our next first level spell slot, so we'll have a total of three, and an additional spell known. I chose Featherfall here, kind of made sense with the wind, ice sort of feel, and it's just a useful oh crap button to be able to pull out of your back pocket. Next up at level four, we're going to take our second level Barbarian, giving us Reckless Attack, which you should use as often as possible, and Danger Sense, making us a little bit better at those deck saves. Like I said, Reckless Attack. Use it pretty much every single round. We don't care about our AC, we don't care about getting hit. We want to get hit because that's going to deal that splashback damage from Armor of Agathis. For level 5, we'll take our third level in Barbarian, giving us our Primal Path. Here's another divergent choice for you. You can choose Flavorful or Powerful. 
I would go with Flavorful, and the character will still be powerful either way, but the path I would go with is the Storm Herald Barbarian, choosing Tundra. This gives us the Storm Aura ability whenever we're raging, giving us the ability to give two temporary hit points to everyone in a 10-foot aura of our choice, and we can do that when we rage as well as as a bonus action while raging. This just helps us defend other frontliners in the party, and as our temporary hit points get dwindled away, we can keep regenerating them. You could also choose the Bear Totem, and you probably should if you're wanting a stronger overall character because it gives resistance to almost all damage, and that works really well with our temporary hit points, but it's less flavorful, it's less interesting. I love the idea of this swirling torrent of snow around my Frost Dragon Barbarian, so I would go with the Storm Herald, but the choice is yours. We'll also get another Rage, a total of three per day, and our proficiency bonus will go up to plus three here. For level six, we will take our fourth level of Barbarian. This gives us our first ability score improvement. I went with a plus two Charisma here. You could up Strength or Con as well, and we will do those with future ability score improvements, but because we're going to be taking so many levels in Charisma, I wanted to get that score up reasonably high so we have a good chance of dealing lots of damage with our late game bigger Frost spells. For level seven, we're going to be taking our fifth and final level of Barbarian. This will give us the Barbarian's extra attack ability, the fast movement ability, as well as increase our temporary hit points from the Storm Aura up to three. We're not going to go any further in Barbarian because the six level Storm Herald Tundra ability is pretty redundant with the character we're playing, and we really want to maximize the spell slots that we're going to be casting Armor of Agathis with. So from here on out, it's going to be straight Sorcerer. Level eight, we're going to have our third level of Sorcerer. We get Hold Person here for free from the type of Giant Soul Sorcerer we are. We also get our meta magic options here. I chose Careful Spell and Quicken Spell. Whatever you like, whatever you think is interesting and cool, there's nothing that's really required for the build here. I liked Careful Spell because later on we could, we're going to be doing lots of AoE Frost Spells, so we want to be able to keep our friends safe. And I chose Quicken Spell because being able to cast one of our spells as a bonus action and then go in and do some melee attacks with our normal action is pretty cool and powerful. This is also where we get our fourth first level spell slot and our first two second level spell slots, as well as another spell known. I chose Rhyme's Binding Ice here for another cool AoE Frost spell. Now that we have second level spell slots, we're going to be using those again, Armor of Agathis more than anything else, but we have enough extra ones now that we can kind of throw some other spells around a little more willy-nilly. At level 9, we're going to take our fourth level of Sorcerer and get another ability score improvement. Here I went with a plus 2 Strength. Similarly, like I said with the last ability score improvement, as long as we're kind of keeping Strength, Con, and Charisma increasing at a pretty similar rate, you can divvy these up however you see fit. We'll get our third second level spell slot here, learn an additional cantrip, and get an additional spell known. For the cantrip, take whatever you want. Uh, there's not a whole lot of flavorful ones that make a whole lot of sense for a frost caster anymore. Whatever you like, take it. For a spell known, I chose Snillux Snowball Storm. Again, just a cool snow-based, cold damage-based spell. Our proficiency bonus also goes up to plus four here. For level 10, we're taking our fifth level of Sorcerer. This is a pretty big power spike for us as we get our first two third level spell slots. The spell I chose here is Sleet Storm. Again, flavorful, ice, AoE, cool effect. But once again, those third level spell slots are more often than not gonna be used for Armor of Agathis. This means at this point though, that when we're casting our Armor of Agathis, it's gonna be giving us 15 temporary hit points and dealing 15 damage every time we're hit with a melee attack. If we can have that damage ability trigger two or even three times because we're reducing the incoming damage from melee combatants, we can deal massive amounts of basically free damage as splashback for enemies hitting us. At 11th level, we'll take our 6th level in Sorcerer, and we'll get our next giant soul sorcerer ability called Soul of Lost Astoria. What this does for us is, after casting one of our Mark of the Ordning spells, that being Ray of Frost, Armor of Agathis, or Hold Person, we will gain temporary hit points equal to our con modifier. If we gain these temporary hit points from casting an Armor of Agathis, they are added to the total hit points of Armor of Agathis, although the damage stays the same. We'll also get another third level spell slot here and learn a new spell. I went with Water Walk, just cool utility for the party. I picture it as me freezing a path through water for my allies to walk behind me. At level 12, we'll take our 7th level of Sorcerer, getting our first 4th level spell slot, and learning a new spell. I went with Ice Storm. 
Level 13, we'll take our 8th level of Sorcerer, getting another ability score improvement. I went with a plus 2 con, getting an additional 4th level spell slot, and learning a new spell. I went with Watery Sphere. Your proficiency bonus also goes to plus 5 here. At level 14, you'll get your 9th level of Sorcerer, getting your first 5th level spell slot and learning a new spell. I went with Cone of Cold. Level 15, we're going to go with our 10th level of Sorcerer, getting a new metamagic option. I went for Twin Spell, as well as learning an additional cantrip and an additional spell. For the cantrip, take whatever you like. For the spell known, I went with Hold Monster. At level 16, you're going to be taking your 11th level of Sorcerer. This is where you get your first 6th level spell slot and learn an additional spell. I went with Audeluc's Freezing Sphere. Level 17, you're going to be taking your 12th level of Sorcerer, getting another ability score improvement. I went with a plus 2 Charisma. At this point, if you've been following it the way that I've been doing this progression, you should have an 18 in all three of your core stats. Your proficiency bonus will also go up to plus 6 here. For level 18, you'll be taking your 13th level in Sorcerer and getting your first 7th level spell slot. You also get another spell known here. I chose Draconic Transformation. At level 19, you'll be getting your 14th level in Sorcerer and get another ability from your Giant Soul Sorcerer Tree. This final ability is the Rage of Fallen Ostoria, an ability that allows you to crease in size and get other benefits as a part of this. It's cool if you make it this high of level. It works pretty well with all your other stuff going on. Just become this big, powerful dragon, crushing stuff on the front lines. And finally, Capstone, level 20. You'll get your 15th level in Sorcerer, giving you your first 8th level spell slot and an additional spell known. There's not really an 8th level spell that felt super fitting for an icy sort of character. So I went with Earthquake. It was the best one I could come up with, but whatever big, powerful spell you like, you can use it here. That is the bi-level breakdown of the Frost Scale Barbarian. For this build though, I'm going to take a moment here and just kind of talk over how to approach combats. Because the combination of a Barbarian and a spellcasting class makes this character a little bit trickier to run. An important rules thing to know here is that you can't cast spells or maintain concentration on spells while you are raging. This means that if you're in the middle of the fray and you're raging and chopping into the enemy and you want to cast your big AoE spell, you can't unless you stop raging. And we don't want that to happen very often. The way I suggest approaching combats with this character, especially at higher levels, is to lay down a big AoE damage spell if it's relevant, if there's multiple smaller enemies to hit, and then go into your kind of normal ability progression that you would use for any combat where you'll be entering into the fray. Your normal kind of start of combat for this character is going to be using your action to use probably whatever your highest level spell slot is to cast Armor of Agathis on yourself. This will give you that big pile of temporary hit points and the splashback damage for whatever enemies you're about to enter into the fray with. I would then use my bonus action to rage. Since you've already cast the spell, the rage doesn't get in the way of that, and Armor of Agathis is not a concentration spell, so the effect will stay on you even after the rage begins. Then charge into the fray and get stuck in. Let people hit you and take damage and then hit them and they'll take even more damage. It's really, really fun and it's really, really awesome. The way that your character just does not care if they get hit because they're taking very little damage and dealing back a ton. Be mindful though when playing this character because as I said, you have a lot of spells to use, especially late game, and your rage will get in the way of using those spells. So make sure that if there's spells you're wanting to cast that'll really help set up a combat or take out some of the smaller enemies at the beginning, use them early on and then get stuck into the fray, do what a barbarian does and start raging and bashing skulls. And that's the Frost Scale Barbarian. Hope that you found this build cool and interesting. Uh, if you want to try it in your own game, please feel free and please leave a comment below of how it goes if you do. If you thought the build was cool, please give us a like down below as well. It's very appreciated. Also, if you enjoyed this, this is our first character build video on the channel. Please give this video tons of support and we'll know that you like this and want to see more of it. And we will definitely happily do that. I'm constantly brewing characters and never have enough campaigns to play them in, so I'm happy to throw them out of the universe for some of you guys to get a chance to use them. Now go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities.